Um, before we start and before we continue with the SQL Server Security, just a small recap on the um, working with the transactions. Why? Because it is the topic of your uh, of your quiz next class. So I'm going to just uh, be passing across um, uh, briefly. If I find anything actually, I need to really explain it. Okay. Otherwise, if you have any um, declarations or requests, you just uh, raise that, please. Uh, so the uh, context of the working with these transactions is a scenario in which we see secure code in, in action means we are going to implement solutions uh, with the consideration of the secure process, secure approach, secure code it means we are going to implement, yes, but not just to deliver a service, but to deliver a secure service. We have to consider the constraints where vulnerabilities might happen. So welcome with transaction, yes. Uh, considering the uh, way how the uh, transaction ha ha has to look like, uh, remember that the transaction is mainly uh, a process via which we see list of queries being, uh, being uh, interpreted. Uh, as per the example of the uh, car rental or the ATM machine, we have actually more than one query to do. Car rental, we have here uh, three queries to, to, to pass. The, uh, the in the ATM machine, we need actually four or five or more even uh, queries to pass. And all of them, they are one transaction, one unique transaction. So either to execute all or to deny all. Uh, so here we talk about a transaction with a list of commands, queries. How to guarantee that those queries and commands, they actually uh, do uh, have to be executed altogether or not? Have to uh, respect, to guarantee the process. So there are properties, amongst of them, the asset properties. Those asset the properties, they are described in every transaction characteristics. If they would be actually fulfilled, thus the transaction is guaranteed and uh, secured. Otherwise, otherwise, not guaranteed and not secured, but the transaction might work still without adopting the asset properties transactions might work still it, they would not fail it's not guaranteed that they would fail but it's not secured the transaction is not secured and the transaction is not guaranteed without respecting the asset, the asset. so uh, uh, applying and adopting the asset is guaranteeing and securing the transaction the vice versa not guaranteeing the asset The transaction is not guaranteed and not secured, but still would be having the chance to run. Uh, so, example of a transaction that actually uh, has more than one query to execute here. We have a transaction. This is actually a, a, a SQL transaction. It's a SQL server-based transaction. And this transaction here has to uh, uh, populate two values, two entities, two records. Not two entities, one entity, but with two records. Either to execute both, or no. Here, the execution of the transaction here. See, the transaction here. Either to execute it or not. We cannot execute the transaction to insert one record and to fail the other. No. Executing the, 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 here, the transaction would result in inserting the values for both, within both. Yeah, so uh, asset actually it is a uh, uh, list of four properties that we have to respect in our transactions for guaranteeing and securing a transaction. It's not to make the transaction work or run. No, remember, means if I ask you to a true false question saying that a transaction is, uh, the, or, or, or a transaction would fail if the asset is not respected, or a transaction would fail if the asset is not adopted. No, answer is false would not fail. It's not guaranteed. It might fail. Yes, might not. It depends on the issues. If the uh, framework or the environment where the transaction run, where the transaction runs is secured, so the transaction will run securely also without adopting or respecting the asset properties. 
but with adopting the asset properties the four of them the transaction would be actually secured yes the answer is true the transaction would be guaranteed the answer is true so we have to understand it this way yeah those are the uh, this is a summary about the uh, role of those asset properties uh, yes moreover than the properties that the transaction has to uh, draw or the transaction has to have those properties moreover than that transactions have transactions in plural have modes it is the context of the um, uh, yes the four modes we, de we declared already so every single transaction has to admit that it would be uh, executed or to roll back to cancel those are the most transaction most uh, whether it is actually a trial transaction means a transaction to be uh, testing only a process testing only uh, some behavior or something like that from within the project then after then after we're going to roll back for example so whatever the concern of the request the transaction modes would specify how the effect of the uh, transaction let's say we, we, we may use the word effect uh, on the uh, on the dbms okay uh, just one uh, I'm, I'm not going to really explain them uh, again no but i'm going to just um, present the first and trivial transaction model which is the auto commit transactions and those are actually said to be auto commit transactions why because they are mainly holding one query in their body so by default that would be actually be admitted and committed by the system the auto commit transactions they do not need from the developer to specify the commitment at the end whether to commit or to roll back because they do have actually one query only and uh, uh, trivially the system we consider them having the auto commit means they would be actually committed at the end of the execution this is due to their body which is holding only one individual query Uh, and uh, regarding the regarding the fourth transaction mode which is the bus scope the transaction which is uh, a mode where we can see more than one commitment from within the body of the uh, same transaction uh, here we define one technology let's say the save points via which we can control portions from the transactions to be either admitted or let's say rolled back the save points the time frame points via which we indicate pillar points or let's say uh, referral points from within the body of the same transaction the batch scope transactions those batch scope transactions those are uh, they are transactions with yes with, with more than one phase let's say because when you say that you are going to admit the first part and roll back the second part and admit the third part and roll back the first part again so it's not a process that we're going to see it in a transaction that has one query no it is a transaction that has more than one phase even and to indicate those phases to uh, to segregate those phases we we can use the technology which is the uh, save points those are time frames and if the save points are being utilized so we are having a transaction which is not bus scoped in the sense of it is actually would have that uh, uh, because actually I trespassed one uh, one definition earlier. Yeah, so if we, we define actually a bus scope transaction, there is a technology here to be seen. Actually, there is a process, there is an architecture, there is. Uh, a scenario that would be actually uh, defined which is the 
multi-valued multi -valued result sets as queries, behaviors, processes to be executed from within the, the same body of the, uh, the same transaction. Uh, those multiple active result sets, they define the mass. They are actually more than one command to be executed from within the same transaction body to have more than one value in outcome. More than one value in outcome. This case, this case, cannot have the process of the use of the save points from within the body. Why? Because one transaction that have more than one outcome, it is not the same scenario when we have one transaction that have more, one, more than one query. The query is just one statement. That's it. But a command with an outcome it has more than one statement. It is a complex, let's say, architecture via which we see one outcome or one command. It is not feasible to use save points because we do not have one query to either admit or to roll back. We are having a command that has an architecture. And the architecture, it does not by force need a location, a start and end of process, no, because it's something to be uh, dealing with the environment. So even if you roll back, already the environment is already uh, utilized. So you cannot cancel by just returning one step further or one step back. Even you just uh, come back one, uh, even to the beginning of the transaction, you roll back, Already the environment has been affected. So it's useless to use the save points. Thus, we talk about the multiple active uh, result sets. And here we define <coughs> clearly the batch scope transaction. The vice versa, if we can roll back portion, partially, we talk about the non batch scoped transactions. Full stop. Here, the, the non mass, sorry, the, the non mass transactions, not the, they are all batch scope transactions. The non mass transactions, they are the ones where we can define safe points. Why? Because they are all sort of queries. Let me pass the next here. These, these are the definition of one, let's say, safe point. If we go to the next slide, the next part of this uh, same transaction, this is one transaction, it starts here and it gets, and gets added here. Okay. From within the body of the transaction, we are having a rollback to a time frame point, which is a save point one here in this case. And this save point one here is defined here. We define this level. So uh, from here to here would be rolled back. All of those contents would be rolled back. Why? Because rolled back, because here it is mentioned rolled back. So it would be rolled back. This one would be executed. And what it comes before, before this save point would be executed. Why be executed? Because here we have comment. So this is a non mass transaction. Because we have only sort of queries only, sort of queries only. So it's a one statement. But when we talk about the mass transactions, no, we define commands. This is a command that has queries. And this is a second command that has queries also. In this example, we have only one query, two different commands. So we create a transaction which have the commands we need. In this case, we have two commands. They belong to the same transaction. And this is actually in the .NET framework. This is in a .NET framework. Microsoft means. It's a good example illustrating the mass transaction. Because this way we define that uh, the transaction has those two commands, whatever. The command content is, whatever the command content is.
So the transaction that has started here, that has started here, has a body, and this body is actually within a, a try block. Try here, it starts here, the try, and it gets ended here. It gets ended here. This try, this try block has to execute, let's say, whatever that we have, the execution of the command 1 and command 2 at the end of the day, and to admit the transaction, not the command, to admit, to commit, or to roll back the transaction, if we roll, to commit the transaction, if we roll back the transaction. So, if you want to just, for example, get a save point, where it would be? We have a save point, save point already just created uh, in somewhere, but Yes, here it is. And this transaction, this save point here, um, this one is allowed only here. It's not, it will not, um, let's say here, actually be utilized later on for admitting the command two, or let's say uh, admitting the command one, or uh, rolling back the command two, or rolling back the. the command one because as we said the definition of this command one and the command two also so the command two and the command one has come before the definition of the transaction even here the command one has is here command two sorry and the command one here it is both of them they are before here and here 17 and 18 they are before the definition of the transaction Yes, before the definition of the transaction. Once the try block has been executed, okay, commit and that's it in this case. Once any issue happens in runtime, in runtime, the catch block would be executed, means the try block would, would stop, and this block would be fired here, from here to here. This is the end of the full transaction. This is the end of the full transaction. And this catch here, this block, would be executed in case of any issue during the runtime happens in this block. From here up to, up to, up to the, uh, here's the startup to the startup, to the startup of this uh, transaction here. Sorry, to the try here. Sorry for the interruption. So, yeah. So, whether the try or the, the catch during the runtime, this is during the runtime, remember, remember, during the runtime. Okay. Moreover, than the, moreover than the um, most, the isolation levels comes into uh, consideration. Why? Because the transactions, when you talk about transactions and we have to talk about security of transactions, do not expect that the project is just dealing with few queries or few commands or few users. There is a huge number of requests and huge number of users that they are using the system at the same time and simultaneously. So issues due to the size of the executions and the size of the processes and the, size, the number of the requests happens during the runtime. They are technically uh, uh, framed. We talk about three, uh, let's say, issues they are actually here, but they are the, the very famous issues that they face the database in, in runtime. The dirty red and the phantom red and the non-repeatable red. They are uh, context of issues. But they happen due to the size of requests, time of requests, um, uh, yeah, mainly mainly during the runtime processes, usually. 
those issues here, since they come and they appear and they just come into uh, consideration during the runtime only, they have to be considered with the way how we are going to execute the transactions. How we are going to execute the transactions. When we say that a transaction is being requested to execute a list of queries and submit the results to the user number one. <clears throat> but no, it displays that to the user number two. This is a dirty lab. What should we do now? What should we do? We have to isolate a transaction in order to say that the transaction is for the session number one, for the user number one, and thus only the user number one will see the entities at that time. So we have to isolate it, the transaction. The transaction has to be isolated. Isolation levels, how to isolate, how to isolate, it has to consider what you need because there is a time to be consumed when we isolate. It is not any. For example, we take this, the, the rather committed uh, isolation level. Actually, it uh, has the issue of the dirty red. It has the issue of the non repeatable red. It has the issue of the phantom. Can we just consider that? It's not only because it has some properties, so we consider it. No, you have to. We have to consider the environment issues. Mainly, mainly we talk about the time. When we take the example of the serializable, and this is the example we solved in the lab, it blocks the use of the entities until the full transaction is being executed. What does it mean? All the other users, if they are thousands and thousands and thousands of users, they would be put in queue waiting for the transaction to be finished in order to be able to use the uh, entities. To use the entities even for simple display, even for simple select, they would not be able to use it. To use the, the entities which are incorporated from the body within the body of the serializable set uh, transaction. So, which isolation level is the best it's not an answer it's not a question that we can find it easily we have to recognize the framework where the transaction is being uh, run and the constraints set by the request based on that we choose this or that based on that we consider which isolation level is the most suitable for the scenario we are tackling Any questions on this level, please? No. Okay. No. Okay, great, great. So, uh, uh, we were explaining the context of the serializable and you said that it is uh, the most consumer, we may say, uh, time the isolation level. Why? Because it makes a deadlock. There is a technical approach or description um, that happens on top of the transactions, which is the de deadlock. And this deadlock means that entities would be actually locked from being used by other transactions until the transaction set to be um, with the, an isolation level serializable finishes. So, after setting the transaction to be in serializable mode, all the entities, the entities means the tables, as per an example, used inside the transaction would be locked and not utilized only by this transaction in question. When it gets finished, this transaction, the other entities not the other entities, the other users, the other transactions, they would be able to use that, that those entities at that time. 
deadlock remember the word deadlock The snapshot we defined it actually since the early of this uh, course, since the, the early age of this course, and we said that it is actually a representation of every single object from within the database in order to be utilized for generation of a chain script. So the snapshot is used to represent the database, yes, for the purpose of generating a chain script later on. This is an isolation level, yes. This is an isolation level. Because, because this way, executions would be actually set on this snapshot, not on the original database. So the uh, uh, original database is eliminated somehow, is hidden, is obscure, is isolated. <coughs> And the snapshot is being executed. So all the activities will be done on top of the uh, snapshot. Later on, there will be actually an update script, change script to update the real database. But here, when we talk about the snapshot isolation level, why I took this example specifically because the deadlock is not seen here. The deadlock is not seen. So the database, uh, sorry, the transaction is being set as a snapshot isolation level. And The transaction would have actually an execute um, to execute, um, let's say, a list of queries, whatever the number, uh, as per the example here. Uh, it's only one query. But even though if it has n queries, the same scenario. So there will be no lock to the entities in this sense. The entity utilized here, this uh, count numbers table would be actually, if, if a request were to use it uh, uh, during the time of this transaction, which is already set as, set as snapshot, yes, this count numbers would be used by other transactions. There will be no restrictions because there is no lock. Because there is no lock on the, on the list of the entities interfering in this snapshot transaction. Okay. Any questions at this level, please? Okay. Mm -hmm. That is not uh, uh, it's clear. That's, that's great. So, so the deadlock here actually it is not something to be seen. But remember, that the deadlock means that the entities from within the body of a transaction cannot be utilized by other transactions. This is in the case of if the transaction is said to be serializable, serializable. So the system by himself will not allow any other transaction to use the entities. What does it mean in entities? In this example, the table test here for the select. And here the same table, test for the update. So we have two queries that use the same table. So okay, this table here, test, will not be able to, util to be utilized by other transactions since the transaction is being executed.
remember that uh, the transaction actually it is not to have only one two three queries it might have hundreds of queries one transaction only and those queries they are dealing with entities which are enormous in size and memory so it would consume a lot of time here we are using a, a predefined method to generate wait time wait for we give a delay which is here at 10 seconds and then after we pass to the next uh, to the next uh, queries so here actually only only to mimic the wait time transactions also the transactions also they are to be utilized in a distributed mode means they actually to be uh, executed remotely and with with a segregated portions to be called from different might be also geographically uh, located blocks or components so distributed attacks I'm sorry distributed transactions simply here simply if you are going to incorporate more than one portion depends more than one transaction let's say uh, outcome we just specify the distributed word the keyword so we are going to start a transaction yes but it's a distributed one because inside we are going to incorporate more than one transaction at the same time uh, with the same body why more than one transaction because this transaction is given an outcome a different outcome uh, so if you have any questions just uh, just uh, raise that please otherwise if you hear your name just say yes